Hello everyone and welcome to the very first uh, Skinny Research and Development tutorial. Uh, today what we're going to be talking about is KeyCAD and KeyCAD is a program that's used to build PCBs for PCB manufacturing. Uh, some of you have expressed some interest in being able to make your own PCBs and put them together for projects that you have. So what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, in three different videos, go over how to use KeyCAD and uh, how to navigate through its different menus and figure out just in a very basic level how to build a PCB so you can get it manufactured yourself. So before we get started, the first thing you want to do is go and download KeyCAD and here uh, at the website uh, www.keycad-pcb.org uh, if you go in the upper left hand corner and go to download it'll bring up the screen and pick the operating system of your choice uh, we'll be using Windows uh, most. Once you click on the operating system, you'll see uh, different versions of KeyCAD pop up. We'll be using the version from 2013, uh, the 7th of July. So after you have downloaded KeyCAD, go ahead and start KeyCAD up, and you will uh, see a program that pops up that looks like this. And the first thing we want to do is we want to create a uh, new uh, project or a blank project. We're going to go in here. I'm going to uh, choose uh, a name for this project. Actually, uh, first thing I'm going to do is create a folder. So we will call this uh, AMP project. And I'm going to give this a similar name as folder. After you create a project, uh, you'll see your project in the upper left hand corner here and uh, you see different programs that you can begin to run. The one on the left is a schematic program and that's what we're going to work on today. Uh, the next uh, video is going to cover a CVPCB which is where we're actually going to assign a footprint for every piece we put on the schematic and then the final piece PCB new is where we're going to actually build the board uh, at the end. So. Uh, we'll start here in the uh, schema uh, program. What we're going to do now is we're going to start adding parts for our project. So the project that I've picked uh, for this video is the LM386 amplifier. Uh, if you look online, you go to Google, type in LM386, uh, you will see a PDF. And in that PDF, uh, it kind of lays out what the LM386 is. Uh, you find out it's an 8-pin chip that's an audio power amplifier and in it it also shows a schematic uh, to build out uh, this amplifier. Now we're going to use this schematic uh, down below I'll have a link so that you can download uh, the schematic and, uh, and print it out if you want to help you uh, follow along with the process. So back to the schema program. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take and look at our schematic and start pulling all the parts that we need uh, to build the PCB, to build uh, the schematic layout to start with. All the way over on the right hand corner you'll see a button that says place a component. So we're going to click that and that's going to give us a crosshair on the screen. So when you click the screen it'll bring up a box where you can select the components that you want. Uh, we're going to select by browser and you'll notice that we have a, a lot of libraries over here on the left hand side that we can go through. Each one of these libraries has a different piece, a different part and what we're looking for is we are going to look for a battery first uh, from, and we got that from our schematic. So if I click device and then go up here to where it says battery it shows me a uh, symbol for a battery so I'm going to double click on that. So once I've selected battery I can uh, use the mouse roller to kind of go up and down, zoom in and out and I'm going to rotate it by pressing R, put the positive terminal up, and then click onto the schematic, and it is now affixed to the screen. So now what we can do is we can go along and pick out the rest of our components. Uh, some of this stuff is pretty easy. For instance, if you click and you type in R, you get a resistor, and it's, we're going to need one of those. Uh, if you do it again and you type in C, you'll get a capacitor. So we're going to need at least one of those. Uh, another thing we're going to need is we're going to need three electrolytic capacitors. Now I don't know what the symbol name is for that, but I'll go back to select browser, go to device, and I've got C here for capacitor, CP, uh, another type of capacitor, and CP1, oh, there it is, my electrolytic capacitor. So, whoop, 
looks like I chose the wrong one, but that's not a problem. All I gotta do is hit escape and go right back. And now I, I'm gonna need at least three of these electrolytic capacitors. So one, and then I can choose it from the history list here. Two, and three. Uh, there are other things that I need as well. Um, go through, uh, one of the things we need is a potentiometer. So I'm gonna look through this device uh, library once again, and there we have it, potentiometer. Uh, it looks like also what we need is we need some sort of way to connect the signal in and the uh, signal out. So we're going to be feeding this an audio signal and we also need some way to uh, get that audio signal out once we've amplified it. And there is no uh, component called signal in or signal out. So what we're going to do is we're just going to say, hey, I need a connection, a connection to the circuit board. So if I come to the connection library, and scroll down, I have one that says connection to, a two pin connection. So that's what we're gonna use. And click on that and we're gonna need two of these, one for in and one for out. All right, the last thing we're gonna need is the LM386 chip itself. And there's a few ways to do this. And I'm gonna show you the simplest way. And then uh, in a later video, I'll show you another way that, that has some benefits, but also uh, has some things you gotta watch out for. So we go back to the browser library and we look under connections, uh, we can do a couple things. So one thing we could do is we could use the eight pin connection, which looks like this and it, it would work okay. Um, but it just doesn't kind of look like the chip. Uh, it's, you know, everything's here on the left hand side and so you could get confused. Uh, one of the things I like to do is come down further to where it says DIL8. And this gives me a, a schematic piece that looks a lot more like the chip itself. I have one, two, three, four pins on the left, four pins on the right. And so we're going to add this. Now I, what I could do is I could go to linear and pick LM386 and it gives me a schematic part that looks like that, but there's some special things you need to do uh, later on in the program to get this to work correctly. But we're just gonna focus on kind of a simple way of doing it right now. So uh, DIL8, we're gonna add that in, and now we have all the parts that we need uh, to put this together. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna arrange all these parts so that it kind of makes sense to us. So here we have our LM386 chip in the middle. If you hit the M key, you'll then be able to move these things around. Uh, so I just hit M and it said, hey, I need you to clarify what you want me to move. Do you want me to move just the field value? That's the actual tag there. Or do you want to move the component? So I'll click component and now it lets me move this around. So I'm going to move a few of these things around. I have my audio in here. have my audio out over here. I'm going to need this potentiometer somewhere close to the input of the LM386. Uh, I will need a capacitor uh, on the output. I'm going to rotate it around. I'm also going to need a capacitor uh, across the battery terminal. So we'll put that there. Uh, the next thing I'm going to need is a resistor, uh, kind of somewhere near the, uh, near the output. And uh, a capacitor as well that goes to ground. And finally, we need one more capacitor and we need that on the input to kind of block DC to keep DC from uh, going into the amplifier. And uh, that's about it. We've got everything placed where we want it. Next thing we want to do is we want to connect everything up with wire. So if you go to the upper right hand corner, you'll see a green uh, wire that says place a wire. We're going to click that. And now we're going to start connecting everything together. So. Uh, for instance, all you have to do is take the component, click it, drag it over, and click it again. If you want to make a bend in the wire, uh, usually it will accommodate that quite easily. Uh, if you want to make a junction, you just click on the wire, bring it to the other component, and you'll see a dot pop up for the junction. And uh, so it's pretty simple just to connect everything together. So uh, I'm going to connect this up and kind of speed it up so you don't have to sit through it all. All right, and we're done. So as you connected all the wires, you probably noticed a few things. Uh, here, uh, 
where we don't have a junction but we have wires crossing that means that it's just two individual wires they do not connect in any way um, and and if I, if they did connect there would be a junction here but there's uh, there's no junction so there is no connection you can just run them right over the top of each other uh, you'll also notice that there are a few things that we didn't hook up uh, pins uh, 1 8 and 7 now uh, KiCad does not like it if you leave pins uh, unconnected so what you have to do is you have to tell it that uh, you're going to leave these pins with no connection. The way you do that is come over to the right hand side click the place a no flag X and then click on those pins to essentially just turn them off to make KiCad ignore them. Alright, the next thing you want to do is you want to label everything so that you can kind of understand it. Now you'll see that each one of these components are labeled in several different ways. Um, you have a, a, a name here, just a, like it says battery or CP1. Um, another one over here just says pot. And then you have a, another label that has a question mark at the end of it. Now the label with the question mark at the end of it has to be unique. No two of them can be alike. This is the label that KiCad is going to use to kind of arrange everything else. Uh, the other uh, label or the other field uh, can be named anything and it can repeat if you want it to. It doesn't matter. This is just a field so that you kind of understand what this symbol is all about. So the way that you go about changing things, for instance we have a capacitor right here and a lot of times I like to label capacitors by their values so I'm not really going to touch one with the question mark I'm going to touch this one down here so I'm going to right click on it I'm going to say I want to uh, go to the field value and I want to edit that value when I hit edit it'll ask me what I would like there and so I say okay I'd like to put 10 uh, microfarad hit OK and now it's labeled that capacitor with 10 microfarad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to label each one of these uh, accordingly. So I'll show you one more. Here's our audio in. Uh, this is the one that KiCad's going to use. This is the one that I can use. So field value, edit it, and I'm going to call this odd in. Now we can also edit this uh, uh, field as well, the field reference. Uh, you, KiCad, uh, you can actually tell KiCad to label it for you, or you can do it yourself. You just have, you just have to make sure that you never uh, repeat the same value over. So usually I just let KiCad uh, pick this value for itself, but if we wanted to, we could say, all right, um, I want to call this odd in as well. Now this is the actual label KiCad's going to use, and this is the one that I have just to remind me what it is. Okay, so take a few minutes and relabel. Uh, so take a few minutes and label everything on the schematic in a way that makes sense to you. Uh, just quick tip, uh, go back up and hit the arrow key button up at the top. Uh, it'll just make your uh, life a lot easier as you start to navigate around. Uh, another quick tip too is if you just want to change the value of the component like I did down here with the 10 microfarad, and you'll do that rather quickly. Uh, I'll show you, uh, if you do, if you just uh, hover over uh, the value you want to change, hit V and uh, you can uh, change it uh, pretty quick that way. So that's the way I'm going to do all the rest of these components. So go ahead and relabel everything. Okay, so I've finished labeling. Now the first thing you want to do after you have everything together, uh, everything looks like it's uh, uh, connected and you've labeled everything the way you want it, is you want to go through this series of buttons up here at the top. The first thing it's going to do is it's going to annotate uh, all of these question mark labels throughout the whole schematic. KiCad will automatically do that for you. So I'm just going to click up here, keep everything default, and just click annotation. It's going to ask me if I want to uh, annotate the entire schematic, and I'm going to hit OK, hit close, and now you'll notice that all the question marks are gone and it's labeled every component on the schematic. Up here where I put odd in, uh, it didn't like that, so what it did is it got rid of in and it just put odd one, uh, which man, works, and then it labeled the other one P2, so I can do anything. I, uh, if, I, if I wanted to change that um, myself, I could. If I go here, click on it, say I'm gonna change and edit this reference from P2, I'll call it odd two if I wanted to. 
Uh, it could even call it odd out if it's all one. So there, I'll just do it that way. And, uh, you know, so it'll just, you know, pretty much notate everything here correctly for you. Next thing you want to do is you want to make sure that uh, everything is connected up correctly. So if you do the test ERC and click test, it says, uh-oh, uh, it didn't like odd out. Okay, so that means I have to go back here, annotate it, hit OK, and it looks like it relabeled it to odd out one. All right, so uh, it didn't like odd out, but it did like odd out one, so it stuck that in there for me. Uh, we go back, we test it again, and this time, no error messages, so good. Uh, next thing we want to do is we want to create a net list. And what this is going to do is it's going to take a, make a list of all these different components so that in the next program, uh, in the next video, uh, we can take and um, we can associate a particular uh, layout to a particular component. So it's something you have to create. You'll see the output of that later. So we'll hit net list. We're going to save it uh, as our project name. And now we've created the net list. Okay, and that's the first part of how to use KiCad, the uh, schema program part. Uh, next video, we'll be going over and uh, associating all of those parts that we created in the schematic to an actual physical layout. And uh, so we'll talk about that more uh, next time. Uh, thank you for watching.